Stanford University professor Thomas Sidoff jointly won the 2013 Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine for his work in neurology. The laureate was the keynote speaker for a science and research lecture at the Parliament. But first of all, he sat down to talk to Europol TV. And the first question we had, how did it feel to win such an accolade? First of all, I have to admit that it's personally very nice. It's just wonderful. And I consider myself to be extremely lucky because I believe there's many others who would have deserved this just as much, if not more. It's a wonderful piece of luck. Let's talk about the, the, the prize that you won. It was for exploring how neurons in the brain communicate with one another across gaps called synapses. So can you explain that to us in sort of simple terms and how important that is? So when you think about how the brain works, it basically works as a huge parallel processing machine that continuously processes information. And the way it does this is by transferring information from one nerve cell to the next in enormous networks of nerve cells. And the transfer of information happens at specialized contacts between the cells, which are called the synapses. And the way the information is transferred is by a chemical messenger that is sent out by one nerve cell and then received and recognized by the other nerve cell. And that mechanism enables the communication process not only to be rapid and precise, but also to process the information. In other words, the synapses don't only just transfer information from one nerve cell to the next, it changes the information. So if we want to understand the brain, we have to understand synapses because they are sort of the key element of how the brain processes information. And so how possible could be that in the future your work could maybe help to solve issues such as Alzheimer's, schizophrenia? I think a huge misunderstanding in the public that I often face and try to speak about is that there's a perception that we actually know a lot about how the brain works and that we know a lot about the many diseases that are uh, really uh, becoming an enormous burden on our population, such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, but also schizophrenia and other types of diseases that affect the brain. We don't actually know a lot at all. We know very, very little. And for these uh, diseases in particular, we do not currently understand how these diseases come about. In order to make progress in these diseases, we need to understand the brain. The work that we did contributes a tiny bit towards that understanding. I think it's essential, but it's just a tiny step. And I don't think that with any, without this, these steps, we will ever be able to actually treat these diseases. In Europe, they have a program called Horizons 2020. Do you think the budget for something that is enough? That's above my taste pay scale. I have no idea how much money that is, is more I could ever imagine. So I cannot tell you whether it's enough or not enough for Europe. I do know that funding is important, but just as funding is important, so is the, are the mechanisms that allocate funding. In the United States, there is a huge potential problem in terms of how the money is allocated. It has gone from a very efficient mechanism to less efficient mechanisms recently that we are all concerned about. I don't know if the same thing is true for Europe, but I think it's very, very important to pay attention to the organization of science and not only to the total amount of money. We can't just always say we need more money. We always need more money. But uh, we really have to actually talk about the content and what's really important in promoting science and what may be not as important priorities in trying to be as efficient as possible, given that there are only limited funds after all. And then just lastly, is there anything that you're working on right now or are you continuing to work on the theory? What are your sort of plans for the future? My, most of my work over the last years has shifted towards a question that I have actually been also extremely interested in for some time that relates to synapses, just as the work that was honored by the Nobel Prize, but asks a different question, which is how are networks in the brain established? How is it that 
the right neurons find each other to talk to each other and how do they know what kind of language to speak to each other. And this question turns out to be central for understanding neuropsychiatric disorders because many of the mutations that have been associated with schizophrenia, for example, turn out to be in genes that are linked to this particular process. Hello, Mr. Thank you so much for joining us on Neuropod TV. Pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. <laughs>